Welcome to Vietnam Vets Speaks Out. This channel was inspired by Oliver Anthony and Dion Sanders. Now give me my theme music. Welcome to my channel. This is Vietnam Mirror of Vets speaks out, speaks out. Today I want to talk to you about something that's near and dear to my heart. The truth. I know a lot of people say there is no truth in the today's world. But that's a lie. There is truth. God's word is truth. I have spent a lot of time recently watching what's going on up in Colorado with Deion Sanders. And because I've been so interested in it, I've spent some time uh, going to his son's YouTube channel, Well Off Media. His name is Deion Sanders Jr. He goes by Bucky. And he has a channel called Well Off Media where you can watch the players practice and you can see Dion giving speeches to his players, I find him extremely ex inspiring. And I also am inspired by the fact that he believes in God. I'm not going to question those beliefs like Jason Whitlock does. But there's something that happens when I go to Bucky's channel that always irritates me. And this is it. You see those three crosses? That's a lie. There were not two men crucified with Jesus. There were four. Why does it matter? Because the truth matters. The truth always matters. I mentioned in a previous video that when you get in a pigsty, you can't help but get some on you. That's an old aphorism. And I've been in a pigsty and I know exactly what that means. The stink that you get on you can't come off. You, you can go and take a shower and you'll still smell it. It takes days to get rid of the odor. For those of you who've never been in a pigsty, maybe that doesn't really resonate with you. So here's one that ought to. <clears throat> if you jump in the water, you're going to get wet. The purpose of those aphorisms, both of them, is that they communicate a greater truth and that is that what you surround yourself with is what you will become that's why i got off of social media because i was surrounding myself with hatred and vitriol and anger and argumentation and it just was horrible for my soul and i finally had to give it up i just couldn't do it anymore I had to get away from it because it was rotting me from the inside out. So, the point is, you, you are what you surround yourself with. <clears throat> you will become what you surround yourself with. So, surround yourself with truth and goodness and peace and you will live a much better life, a much more peaceful life, a much more enjoyable life. But getting back to the point, I made the bold statement that there were not two men crucified with Jesus, but four. Let's look at the Bible and see what the Bible says. First, I want to look at a verse in Timothy. It says, Hasten to present yourself approved to God, a workman not ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. That's what Timothy says. That's our job, is to accurately handle the truth and let the chips fall where they may. If it angers people and they don't want to be friends with us anymore, then that's fine. I'd rather be stuck with the truth than stuck around liars. So let's look at Matthew first. Matthew says, two robbers were crucified with him, 
one on the right hand and, uh, and the other on the left. Pretty straightforward, right? <clears throat> and then a few verses later, in the same way, even the robbers who were crucified with him berated him. So there were two men crucified with him, one on the right, one on the left, and both of them berated Jesus. Okay? Now let's go to Mark. Mark says, along with Jesus, they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. That's it. That's all Mark says. And he agrees with Matthew. Okay? Now let's look at Luke. Luke says two others who were criminals were also led away to be executed with Jesus. Now you notice it doesn't say they were crucified with him. It just says they were led away to be executed with him. Might mean nothing, but it might mean something, okay? We have to get more context. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on the left. Now, we scroll down to a later verse. One of the criminals who hung there heaped abuse on him. Are you not the Christ, he said? Save yourself and us. But the other one rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, since you're under the same judgment? We are punished justly, for we are receiving what our actions deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now remember we read in Matthew that both of the men that were crucified with him reviled him, rebuked him. They spoke out against him. But here in Luke, Luke says one of them did, but the other rebuked the first one, not Jesus. So are we looking at a contradiction? Well, if there's only two crucified with Jesus, we definitely are. Luke and Matthew cannot be talking about the same story. And this is the point. It causes you to doubt the word. And when you doubt the word, your faith is weakened. And when your faith is weakened, it's harder for you to believe in God. It's harder for you to communicate with God. And it's harder for you to get help from God. Now, I've highlighted the next verse in a different color because I wanted to point out something, that this is an issue with almost every translation of the Bible. Not this particular verse, but this issue. And Jesus said to him, This I tell you, comma, Today you will be with me in paradise. Was Jesus in paradise that day? No. He died and he was resurrected three days and three nights later. So this again can't be true, right? Well, in the original Greek that the Bible was written in, there was no punctuation. So when you see punctuation in your Bible, what you're looking at is the translator's interpretation of what the Greek says. Take the comma out. Truly I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. Or, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Which is true. The comma makes all the difference. And that comma is not in the Bible. That is an interpretation. That is an addition by someone who translated it. Now, if Jesus said, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise, then Jesus lied, or Luke lied, one or the other. There can't be any other possible answer, right? But if Jesus said, today I say to you, you will be with me in paradise, that's an entirely different story. Because that could be true. When Jesus said to him, I say to you today, 
he was using an expression that was often used in that part of the world in that time in history. I say to you today was a way to emphasize this is what I'm saying to you now. You will be with me in paradise. So you see, even a little comma like that can cause you to doubt your faith. It can cause you to wonder why the Bible is full of so many errors. The truth is that the word of God as originally given to the men who wrote it down was accurate. The translations that we have today may or may not be. And it's up to you to sort through what you read on the page and figure out what's true and what's not. So let's get back to the cross. The one guy says, aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other one says, man, what's wrong with you? Don't you realize this guy is innocent and we're not? That's not what Matthew said. Matthew said they both rebuked him. But Luke says one did, the other didn't. So what are we talking about here? Are we talking about different people or the same two people? Well, if God's word is true, they have to be different people. Now let's look at John. Oh, sorry. Uh, Got to go one more, sorry. <clears throat> Look at this verse. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side with Jesus in the middle. Oh, okay, now we're back to just two crucified with him. Again, we have a contradiction. We have something that doesn't, work it, it, it's basically you can't fit this puzzle piece together <coughs> excuse me so you have to ask yourself is the bible a false book if it is what's the point in believing in it and if it's not a false book if it's god's word then why are we reading these contradictions well this particular contradiction is not caused by the Bible. It's caused by the translators. Here's the Greek for this same verse. Him they crucified, and with him others, two, on this side and on that side. Notice what's missing? Let's go back and read the verse again. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side. That one got added. It's not in the Greek. Go look at the Greek again. It's not there. It got added. So John tells us the truth. There they crucified him, and with him two others, on each side, with Jesus in the middle. Okay? So there were four crucified with Jesus, not two. Why does it matter? Because your faith matters. Your belief in God matters. And if you, your belief is being constantly challenged by contradictions and errors in the Bible, then your faith is going to be weakened. Remember, you are what you surround yourself with. So, take the time to seriously read the Bible. Carefully read the Bible. Look up the Greek. You don't have to understand Greek to look this up. I showed you that, and I'm going to put these, all of these verses in the description so that you can look at them. But you now have a picture of what took place. You had two men that were crucified with Jesus, one on the right, one on the left. Then you had two other men that were crucified with him. One on the right, one on the left. 
two of the men, the ones that were crucified with him first, the robbers, both rebuked him. But only one of the men that was crucified with him that were criminals rebuked him. And the other one rebuked the first criminal. Now, there's one other thing that happens that kind of seals the deal. It was the day of preparation, and the next day was a high Sabbath. In order that the bodies would not remain on the cross during the Sabbath, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies removed. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water flowed out. Now I want to show you something. This is a picture of five crosses in Normandy, France. No idea how they got there, why they were put there, but they accurately represent the crucifixion. Now I want you to think about this. The soldiers came and they broke the legs of the first, broke the legs of the first, then of the other who was crucified with him, and then when they came to Jesus and saw he was dead already, they pierced his side. Think about that. They came to the first. Then they walked past Jesus and broke the legs of the other that was crucified with him. And then when they came to Jesus, does it make any sense to you? No, because that's not what happened. They broke the legs of the first, and then they broke the legs of the one right next to Jesus, and then when they came to Jesus, they saw he was dead already and they pierced his side. Make sense? It matters. The truth matters. It matters to you. It matters to your mental well-being. It matters to your spiritual well-being. It matters to your belief in God and your trust in God. It matters when you pray. When you pray, you have to pray with belief. How are you going to believe if you're constantly seeing contradictions and errors in the Bible? So, it's up to us to study to show ourselves approved unto God as workmen who accurately understand the Bible. I'm going to talk about some other stuff later on, but that's enough for one day. As always, I pray that you are well and that you prosper, and that all the people that you love prosper and are well and have long lives. I pray that God will keep you safe and I ask you to be anxious for nothing but in all things with prayer and supplication let your requests be made known unto God and the peace that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Vietnam Miravet out. <laughs>